All right, fighters, top of the hour here, 6 Eastern, 4 o'clock Mountain Time, ready for a little contractor Q&A. I see, let me say hi to Skynet is here. Uh, I don't know who else has commented yet. Sitting at home, didn't sell enough. Now I'm at home with no money, no work. Behind in my bills, what do you recommend? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and Ants is here. Roz is here. What's up, Roz? All right. So, my friends, um, Carlos is here. I'm just going to say hi for a couple minutes here. Um, and then we will... We will get rolling. Um, so I'm going to start this with a question that came in on a contractor's uh, Facebook page, a contractor group Facebook page that's not mine. And uh, I'm going to answer it because it's pretty common. Barry, what's up? Craig, how are you? Facebook user, what's up? Um, so guys, we're going to be down and dirty here today. So get your questions ready to put them in there. And I'm going to bang through them. I've got limited time here because uh, I got some things I got to do before I leave town in the morning for a uh, workshop I'm doing in Ohio for a company there. And um, so I just have a lot of shit to do. I was just away for a few days uh, at a cabin with uh, my wife. I got to plug my phone in here. Uh, for her birthday weekend, just the two of us got away and uh, had a good time. So, Brad, what's up? Good to see you. 940, how are you? Ty, love the process. What's up? Jim, how are you? Anthony, good to see you. All right, so guys, I'm going to dig in here. I'm going to start with, uh, like I said, a, um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I suppose you can because Roz would have let me know by now, so never mind. We're good. Um, a Facebook um, question came and I'm going to paint a picture here. <clears throat> then I'm going to give some of my thoughts. Let me pull up my handy dandy readers so I can, uh, see. <laughs> okay. Now it's a really long post. I'm not going to read his whole post. Uh, it's a guy named Ben it says I, um, he, he talked about one of the things holding him back. I asked a question. I said, what's one thing in your character that is preventing you from earning five times what you are right now. And I actually encourage all of you to type your answer in there. One thing in your character, don't say, um, I suck at marketing. That's not your character. Okay. So this guy, Ben answered, he said, I care about people too much. All right. Um, and this resonated with me because, um, I typically, um, uh, fuck this up <laughs> from time to time. And I replied, um, I'm sorry, it wasn't Ben. Um, it, so Aaron, a guy named Aaron asked the question or said, I care about people too much. I said, that's not a bad thing. I actually think it's a superpower to grow your income that you care about people so much if, if you rope it in. Right. And then Ben replied, I see there's where this could be a superpower, but it seems to be a weakness. I'm generous with my employees and they always take advantage of it. I let my new guy take off early with a full day's pay on a regular basis, pay him for his drive if it's over 45 minutes, pay him to drive between jobs during the day, give him his bonuses. I've paid him for days he didn't work. What does he do? He starts padding his hours, taking hour long lunches and clocking out halfway through, milking jobs out to make them last longer. Anyone relate to that? I know I can and have. I would like to know how to treat my employees like I want to be treated without getting this response. Um, I give them rope and then they hang themselves. I'm paraphrasing all this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here's my question. Is there a way to screen for the kind of people that will not take advantage of your generosity? <clears throat> Are they out there? Or do I need to learn from my mistakes and start treating them like they treat me? Like they are a problem to be dealt with. Um, how many times should I hire someone and give them the benefit of the doubt? Is there something I'm missing? Uh, some way to get people to other, understand. And basically he's looking for tips to create a culture where the good treatment and good pay are received with gratitude instead of theft. Can you relate to this? Anybody? All right. 
I know several of you can, which is exactly why I chose to answer this question. Is there a way to screen for people to not take advantage of your generosity? We'll just leave it at that for the question. All right. But you get the point, hopefully. So guys, here is, here's my take on this. I got six things that I'm going to bullet point quickly. And if you have other questions, guys, put them in there. <clears throat> Number one, the employees, these issues that, that uh, Ben is having, to me, are a character issue. Okay, it's, it's about their character, who they are as a person. It's important to understand that your character follows you no matter what you do. So these guys could work for a hot dog stand and they'd still be treating the owner this way, okay, uh, if they were allowed to. So understand this is a character issue. Number two, this is about the culture that Ben is creating. Ben, you are creating your culture. And these issues that you're having with people, these recurring issues with your employees, you and, and I'm not saying you don't already know this, maybe you do or don't, not my problem. Um, you are the one that, oops, where's my, uh, I just fucked up my screen. There it is. You're the one that's created this bed that you now have to lay in. And so I want you to think of it this way. There's many ways that we can describe culture, you guys, okay? But in this case, the culture Ben has created is, is the intersection between what he expects and what he tolerates. That point is the culture he gets. So he's expecting on time and not padding hours and all these other things, yet he's tolerating these things. It's not, and I've been there, okay? Uh, I, I'm not going to tell the story now for time's sake, but I fired seven employees within 20 minutes because I realized I'd been tolerating shitty behavior, Okay. Uh, that was a character issue that I had nothing to do with creating their character. And Ben, you had nothing to do with creating the character of these employees. However, you're tolerating behavior that's making your life really hard. And as you grow your company, if you keep tolerating that, your FWs, your winners, your fucking winners, they are going to start getting, they're going to lose respect for you when you hold on to people that way. Okay. Number three, you hire right by getting clear on what your ideal team member looks like, okay? What your ideal team member looks like, all right? Describe them, all right? Um, I want somebody, I'll give an example. I want somebody who's a lifelong learner, okay? I want somebody who's always looking to grow, always looking to learn. They're competitive, all right? Um, there are just a few things off the top of my head here. Number four, you interview around those values or criteria of what makes your ideal client or I'm sorry, your ideal team member. So back to the learner thing. All right. When you interview you guys and Ben in particular here, if you ever see this, I don't care about their skill at this point. Okay. I'm not even going to ask one question around, can you paint or can you fucking hang crown molding or whatever the skill is you're hiring for? Not even asking that in the first couple interviews, probably. Does not bother me one bit to not talk about those things because if I don't get the character thing right, the skill doesn't matter. Okay, so the so just like I have, excuse me, here are our fight values on the wall behind me. Own your crap, get oxen. These are our values in the fight that correlate with who's a good fit on our team here. All right. So I'm going to ask questions that are rooted in these values when I interview. And I don't get to interview anymore, by the way, because I like everybody and my team doesn't let me hire people anymore. <laughs> okay. So, um, because I can find a reason to like everybody initially. All right. So our, our team in the fight is phenomenal at interviewing for the values that we've created as a company. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask questions that are rooted in that. So um, instead of saying, are you a positive person? You know, positive peeps only. I'm going to ask a question or we're going to ask a question along the lines of, um, Hey, share something with me in the last seven days that it was really hard to keep a positive attitude. See, they can't bullshit you when you ask them open-ended questions. All right. So if one of your values, Ben, or whoever's watching this, uh, of your ideal, uh, um, employee team member is they got to be a learner. Okay. Somebody who's coachable, somebody who, who's always growth minded, however you want to call it. The question might be, Hey, tell me about what you're reading right now. 
Think about that. What are you reading right now? All right. If they can't tell you a book that they're reading, or maybe they're not a reader, that's cool. What book are you listening to right now? What podcasts are you listening to? Or tell, share something with me in the last 90 days that you realize might have been a weakness of yours and you wanted to make a strength and you've been working on. What does that look like? And I don't care what area of their life it is. Doesn't it be a business thing or a career thing? But how you do one thing is how you do everything, okay? Uh, number five, he's paying bonuses and all this other stuff. Guys, create a compensation plan that's in their hands, okay? Um, where it's, it's just clear, here it is. You either do it or you don't, okay? Ben, it sounds like, is just a really nice guy, and he's desperate to hold on to people because we all need people, but you don't need the wrong people. Number six. And then I'll take your questions in the box here, guys. Um, you can be a kind person, okay? You don't have to be an asshole to be a boss. You know, Ben's like, I love people too much. I'm kind to people. I'm a nice guy, all right? Guys, I'm all of those things. I'm, I'm incredibly patient with people, I, I believe. I think I am, and I think my team would tell you that, um, to a fault, and it's something I personal, personally struggled with through the years as I've built companies, okay? Which is also why I got to have, you know, people around me that are stronger in that area. However, I, I want to leave you with this, with this question here. You can be a kind person, but you also have to be kind to you. Ben, you've created a culture that in your efforts to be kind to your employees, you're giving yourself the short end of the stick. And that's just not kind to you. It's not fair to you. So create what your ideal team member looks like, interview around those, okay? Don't allow yourself to tolerate things that aren't in line with the expectations you have of what it takes to work here in your company. So hopefully this helps, man. Uh, great question. And uh, we get things like that from time to time. So I got a few, uh, about 15, 17, I got 17 minutes left. All right. <clears throat> Caleb, I've been working in the trades for about six years now. Recently just passed my, my contractor's test. I'd like to go out on my own, but I feel like I might be too young at 25 years old. Any advice? You're not too young, man. Um, listen, I um, there's, there's these two guys that are business partners that do Christmas lights here in my area. Uh, 2021 was their first year in business, so last winter. Uh, they did about a hundred grand in about two months in sales, hanging Christmas lights. This year they did just over $400,000 and they're both like 21 years old. Okay. So this has nothing to do with your age and everything to do with how you choose to show up and win the moments each day. Will you commit to doing what it takes to be a business owner? If you don't have my book, go get my book, winning, winning the contractor fight. Okay. Uh, it's all about the mindset around this. I think you're in an advantage because uh, old people like me, I'm 53, I'm tw more than twice your age. I love giving business to young, hungry people, okay, that have their shit together. Um, so your age has nothing to do with this. Uh, winners find a way. So if you're the type of person that is willing to put in the work, play the long game, okay, because success is a long game. It's not a one-time event. It's a process and you trust and follow that process, um, then you're going to win long-term and you're going to be way ahead of a lot of people that started a business when they're older. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> All right. Other questions here. Sean, what's up, buddy? Where does kindness end and hurting others on your team begin? Listen, we can be very firm. Okay. Um, we can be very firm and kind. Like, you know, I recently had a conversation with somebody on the team. I called this person up and I said, Hey, you know, I, I got to have a tough conversation with you. And we had the tough conversation and we just owned it. We just talked about it and it was very uncomfortable for both sides. And we had a conversation and we, and we left it, left the end of the conversation on good terms. So guys don't think that like, now, if I'm coming out and I'm attacking you, if I'm passive aggressive, if I'm taking shots at you um, and I'm intentionally trying to ding you and hurt you, that's one thing. But I don't think most of us are like that. I think most of you just want shit done right. You want to have good people on your team. 
And if someone's not working out, uh, Sean, I think it's, um, Hey, I'm communicating with respect. And I think a lot of times, Sean, people confuse directness with unkindness. And I think, I think that's where society's gotten a little soft, to be honest. So, um, you know, create that environment, you know, our top value here is own your crap in the fight from me and everyone else in the organization. So this is just how we do things here. And we talk to each other. We tell each other the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth pisses you off. Okay. Um, all right. Carlos, I've been under a contractor as a in-house employee on and off two years. I don't get paid on time like I should, because he says he's low on cash. He chases deposits, can't keep people any advice. Yeah, find a new job. <laughs> there's plenty of people. Carlos, if you have your shit together as an employee, I, there's plenty of people that would love to hire you and will pay you on time. All right. Uh, I don't fuck around as an employee. If I'm an employee, I don't fuck around with somebody who doesn't pay me. All right. If I'm doing what you've, you've agreed for me to do and you don't pay me on time, I'm gone. I like done. Okay. Maybe one time I go, okay. But the next time it fucking happens, I'm gone. Um, Jay Johnson. Sup. Um, do you have any tips moving your business to a different state? Uh, yes. Yeah, start building your brand before you move there. Six months before you get there, you know, build your website, um, start reaching out to influencers in, in the area there. Tell them, Hey, I'm just say you're a painter. I don't know what you do. Um, Hey, listen, I'm relocating. I'm a painting contractor. I have a successful business here. I'm picking up and moving there for some family reasons. I thought it might make sense for us to in, you know, meet each other, have a conversation, and just start. I'd probably make a few trips there and do some networking events. I'd join the Chamber of Commerce because that's the fastest way you're going to meet people. Uh, but I would start marketing before you get there and uh, hit the ground running when you move there. Mira, what's up? Good to see you. It was good seeing you a few weeks ago in AZ. Uh, any, uh, I've been working hard to network, meet influencers, many of whom are contractors or in adjacent industries. I'm wor worried they'll be scared off by my comparatively high prices. That the, what you charge and what they think about it is not your problem. You charge what you have to charge. You be confident. This is why we talk about building content. Uh, this is why we talk about building the shit out of your influencer list because you only need a couple. You don't need them all. And, uh, and this is why you continue to market those people because over time, their current providers are probably going to piss them off at some point because they're not following me. All right. And doing what we're teaching here in the fight. So, um, yeah. And your next post down there says, I know I need to work on my confidence. Um, but any advice specifically when dealing with influencers? Yeah. And this also is part of your sales process and pre-qualification process. You know, this is, this is why role plays are so important. That's why we do them every day inside of battleground and stuff. So it builds your confidence of how to talk about money, how to deal with, with not just deal with how to demolish and annihilate the objections they give you when they tell you that you're higher. But again, the root of this is this is not your problem. Okay. What, what they think of your prices has no, nothing to do with you. Okay. It's their own shit in their head. Kevin, what's up, brother? How can you get rid of the drama with grown ass men? Love my team, but the drama is killing me. Fire them. Have your own Black Monday like I did many years ago, buddy. Um, the worst thing you guys can do, and Kevin, I know, I know you well. Um, the worst thing you could do, brother, is build and scale your team that's full of a bunch of divas and prima donnas, and you got to cut that shit off sooner rather than later. And have a come to Jesus talk fall on the sword for anything that you've dropped. Hey guys, I've dropped the ball. Like I've allowed certain things here. I've tolerated certain things here that don't fit our values. Um, we're tolerating things that we say can't happen, you know, in our, in our employee handbook. And, and there's an error respect here that we just don't have. And it starts with me and I own that. So I'm going to own it. And here's my plan of how I'm going to choose to show up differently and be the example for you. And you're either going to make it here or you're not but we are a drama free business and, and then have that talk. And then you got to follow through on that, man. It's not, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. Um, and so I'm actually relocating to Montana to be a painting contractor. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. 
Sean, we've got 10 minutes left. I feel like I'm in the ugly duckling stage. By that, I mean I'm marketing and my advertisement has me competing with the major companies in my city. My quality work is being recognized as some of the best. My pricing is matching these big companies and sometimes more expensive. It seems clients are seeing me as a smaller company and I should not be as expensive. Last week, I went on... I went two for eight on estimates. A couple losses were due to the timeline, but I believe image could be a reason. Excuse me, of hiccups. Sean, here's the deal, man. You need to learn how to sell and pre-qualify and, and, and demolish and annihilate these objections uh, about the perception of your business in the pre-qualification phone call on the sales process. Um, number one, that's the first thing that off the top of my head. Number two, build your value through this. Educate people, use content. All right. Uh, the more content that you create that is valuable, the more you will position your yourself, regardless of the size of your business, you will position yourself as the expert and people trust the experts. All right. So, um, you know, I think you actually have an advantage when you're smaller uh, and you have the bigger, bigger companies out there. We do a thing in our five day social media challenge and battleground that we teach people, you know, what to say when you're doing social media posts, if you're the new guy. Okay. And why it's an advantage for you. Um, but if you're going two for eight on estimates, number one, you should not be going physically. If you're going physically on eight estimates, you should not go on those physically guys. When you go out, if you're, if you know how to sell, you're going to close 90 to hundred percent of your site visits because the sale happens on the phone before you go out there. That's when you differentiate that. And it's, it's funny. It's ironic. You brought this up because I literally just had my video guy here and we just shot a video on how to prove your value before you ever meet somebody. Okay. How to prove your value in the motive step of our pre-qualification process, because we think a lot of things are of value, but unless we're, but when we do that, we make assumptions of what's important to people. So when you flip it, you're going to uncover what true value means to them. And it doesn't matter what your damn price is. And they don't care how old you are or how big your business is. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. A couple of them, blah, blah, blah. Um, Jay Johnson, websites you recommend. Yeah, build a website. Invest in a website. Okay. Um, talk to Contractor Growth Network and they will get your phone to ring. All right. Um, if you have your shit together, it's on you to close the deals, but um, that's who I would recommend here. And you should still have a Facebook page, but Facebook's owned by somebody else. We want to own, you know, the hub of our marketing world, guys, should be your website. Okay. And then it's, it's connected from Facebook, Instagram, all those things back to your website. Um, Mr. Hartman, good to see you. Water filtration system, third year. I'm near, I am near high value homes with rural homes a little farther from me. I'm skeptical of potential customers in rural areas, not sure if they're worth my time, uh, but I do get some work. Do I take calls or focus? You take the calls and you shin foo them. Okay. Um, you pre qualify, pre qualify them with our process, and then you'll know if it makes sense to go out there. Some will, some won't. So what? Next, move on. Uh, battleground link. We'll post that. If it's not already posted, Sean, um, do you suggest going to job walks? I don't know what you mean by that. Please be more specific. Uh, gorilla. What's up? Perfectionist. That's your first problem. Just kidding. Um, and at times it works as a disadvantage. I provide concrete for builders. I think of flat work concrete as decorative concrete. And this can result in more time spent on a job. I have a very high standard for workmanship. Other concrete companies, in my opinion, are leaving garbage, getting paid the same, given the same amount of work. I won't sacrifice quality work. I would rather go over a floor, uh, over a floor one more time and make sure it's perfect than leave. Well, this is a conversation you have with your builders, man. The, exactly what you said. Hey, man, I'm, I'm in a tough spot here. You know, um, just the way I choose to do our projects, I know... Um, doesn't always fit the budget of the job that you want. So what do we need to deliver as a company for you to be thrilled with the end result and the experience so that I can set my expectations properly? Okay. And, um, and have that conversation again, it, this is a sales conversation, man. Um, 
And then if you're recognizing that this is hurting you at times, I mean, listen, there, let's just call it what it is. There, you know, I was in the painting industry. Guys would spend another half an hour painting a fucking door that no one would ever notice except him. Okay. And, you know, at some point you got to draw the line based on what the agreement was in the contract that you signed. So, um, ask a question, ask your builder, Hey, what, what's a properly finished gr- uh, flat work look like to you? Describe it to me. Let's get on the same page with that because I think I'm, I'm thinking of this. And if I'm thinking of this and you're thinking of that, we're going to have a problem. Okay. Um, Max length you pro- recommend for blog post. Um, whatever gets the job done that answers the question and communicates what you're trying to communicate. I would say uh, well over, you know, 500 words or more is going to be better for SEO. Um, You know, some people will say 300, but I'm, you know, I'm not an SEO expert, but I do know if you're answering the question and I, I would search other companies that are doing this well and imitate them and see how they're, they're, they're packaging the information. Um, you can turn one post into a few different posts if it's super long. I know some people that write 1500 to 2000 word blog posts because they've got, they understand the keyword game really well in SEO and and they get a shit ton of, um, link, um, um, search results from that. People find them. Corny, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Any Texas visits soon? No, I was just there two weeks ago. Um, might be doing something with Nari and Austin, N-A-R-I. If you don't know what that is, if you're a remodeler, you should be in there. Um, and uh, they're talking to me about coming to do a keynote there for one of their, their chapter in Austin sometime this year. When GC have a job walk before the bid, should I walk the job with the other subs? That's on you, man. You know, I, I'm I'm not walking shit unless I have a conversation with the GC first. I'm not walking, you know, if I'm a painter, I'm not walking the job with four other painters that I have other shit to do, okay? Um, <laughs> Mirror's painting the door right now and it's been in too long. It, guys, nothing's ever perfect, by the way. Don't ever use the word perfect, okay? Nothing is perfect. And, um, I, I even had customers say, yeah, I want these walls to look perfect. And I'd just go, I would hold my hands up like a timeout and I'd smile. And I go, I got to call a timeout on the field here. And they'd look at me and we'd chuckle. It's in good spirit. Right. I go, listen, I could paint your wall. What we think is perfect. And there's still going to be waves in it because of the drywall or the way the house is framed. So I just want to set your expectation that there's no such thing as perfect. Now in the painting world, we have the PCA, Paint Contractors Association. They actually have written standards of what a properly painted surface was. And I would show them like, this is the definition of a properly painted surface. And we pretty much exceed these guidelines, but I just want you to know it's never gonna be perfect. Okay. Um, uh, Carlos, I got one more minute guys. Carlos, so last call for questions. Uh, work and finish carpentry for a few years now. I'm thinking of switching trades like HVAC. That's fine if you want to do that, but whatever shitty habits that you've been building your business now that are not working for you, you're going to bring them with you to the HVAC trade or anything else you do. So fix you first before you switch trades. Um, again, I don't, I don't know your um, context of your business right now. James, what's up, brother? Yeah, perfect. To bring to full development, finish or complete, so as to need, leave nothing wanting, okay? Original meaning of perfect, great one. All about questions on a paint company as well. How do you feel about square footage pricing? Um, only in a new construction situation where I've already figured out the man hours to do it and we're, build, we're painting the same house over and over again. Other than that, um, square footage pricing always starts with the man hours. So you can figure up like, uh, go to you. Well, you're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, go to YouTube. I just did a video on how to bid a paint paint job. Okay. I use that as an example, 12 by 12 room, eight foot high walls. That's 384 square feet. Okay. So we would divide that by 100 square feet per hour for two coats. It was 3.84 hours under normal conditions to put two coats on the walls of a room. Okay. Um, thank you, Wyatt. Appreciate that. 
Craig, again, you talked about itemizing. I stopped doing it for six months into my first year. What's a polite way to tell folks uh, not something to offer? It's an insurance job. Um, I'm not an insurance expert, so I'm the wrong guy to, to talk insurance with, but uh, it's our company policy that we don't itemize because uh, things change. Like the, the price, the itemized prices change based on how much work you do here, right? Like if I itemize a ceiling for 150 bucks, I'm not, and they just choose the ceiling to paint, I'm not going to go out there and paint a ceiling for 150 bucks. It's going to be a thousand bucks minimum. Okay. So, um, you know, one thing we used to do is if they really wanted something itemized, I would, I would add 30% or more to every itemized thing. I say, that's what it costs. If you do these a la carte with a minimum of X amount of dollars, if you do the whole job, um, then I'll apply, I push a button in my software and it applies economy of scale and it'll be less quite a bit less and you'll be happy. Um, Mike, what's up? Um, give me one second. I got to grab something that somebody asked for a minute ago. Um, somebody asked about battleground. So if you want to get in, uh, go there and sign up. Okay. Uh, we're changing the domain. We change it every so often. So it's not always out there anyway. Um, Mike, last question here, guys, <clears throat> when your team member does upsell, what would be a good bonus? Would it be based on the total amount of the upsell or the profit of the upsell? Um, only our crew leaders were allowed to sell. So the normal painter on our crew was not allowed to upsell, was not allowed to talk money with the customer because we wanted our crew leaders to be elevated in our company and have opportunities to make more money. Uh, our upsells were based on uh, a percentage of the sale as long as other conditions on the job, like the, the original job and the upsell all has to come, on, come in at or under the budgeted man hours, great experience, all A's on the grade card, safe job site, no issues for them to be eligible. Uh, and then we also worked that in with our crew leader management fee, uh, which also allowed our crew leaders to make more money on every job. So this is back to what I said earlier about the guy who's paying bonuses and shit to his people and are walking all over them. Um, you know, you have to put their additional um, uh, uh, income that they want to earn, put it in their hands based on the criteria that you set up. So anyway, guys, appreciate you. Uh, like I said, I got to, I got some things I got to do to uh, get out of town early in the morning to go to Ohio for a workshop. I'm doing a private workshop for a company um, in and out of Ohio and um, appreciate you carving out a half an hour of your day here to spend with me and hang out. Guys, I know there's other questions here I didn't get to. If you're not in our Facebook group, go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash Facebook and jump in and you can ask your questions there. There's a lot of semi-qualified people. There's a bunch of fucking knuckleheads in there too. There's over 12,000 people in there. Uh, if you want the real advice from the group, jump, jump into battleground and, uh, follow me on Instagram at real Tom Reber. It's the ticker there at the bottom of the screen. If you're not on Instagram, I do a lot of good stuff there. So guys, I appreciate you. Have an awesome night and we'll see you next time.